Welcome to the Nook and the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here again today with John and Mike. Yo. Howdy. And I am actually drinking a beer tonight. It is Hoppy Birthday by Alpine Brewery, I believe. Hoppy it's really hype. Birthday. Yeah, it's really hoppy. Like it's, it has a nice, crisp, you know, citrusy flavor. It's fitting because your birthday was yesterday. <laughs> Steve well, made it around the it sun was, one more time. It was some day oh, recently. Oh, well, yeah, some day recently. <laughs> yeah. It was recent. Yeah, depends on when you're watching the show, too, I suppose. So. And I just finished Latitude 33's Blood Orange IPA, which I think is superb. Blood Orange? It was pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. I tried I tried uh, Valley Center Brewery ha- has one, too, that I thought was really good. I haven't tried that one. But oh, I would have saved some for you. Sorry. Actually, I did try it because I thought it was my oh, beer yeah, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did try it, and it tasted really sweet compared to my hoppy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of hard for me to judge, but it's generally a sweet beer, I think, anyway, though. Yeah, I think it is, too. If it has a orange in it, I would, I would hope so. It could be like, you know, like the grapefruit. Of course, grapefruit that's already goes well with hops, so... Mm. Fair enough. Oh no, my battery's dying. What? What are we going to do? <laughs> Quick, hit the button. Today's show topic. So <laughs> it's going to move the screen so I can see the time again. Yay, because <laughs> we need to know the time. What button do I hit? Oh no. <laughs> oh well, 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 we'll just wing it anyway. We'll just wing it? Okay. We'll just wing it. Well, I don't know what we think. We were five minutes in, something like that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it feels like five minutes. I, I'm pretty sure it won't seven matter minutes, if we go seven, over a little seven, bit. Seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you have a timer? Just, like, throw your shoe at us when you think yeah. we're done, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a timer? What time do you want to end? Quarter, quarter after ten? I don't know what time it is now, so. At 9.47. At 9.47. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if we run a little long, it's not like it yeah, matters. Not the I'll, end I'll of the world. Do it the old fashioned. I'll wave at you at 10.15. Do a little dance. Do we, <laughs> do, we have a, do we have a red light we can turn on? And, it's a ball. It's a get, ball. get one of those hooks. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. Off screen. Hook her by crook. Uh, do you remember so, that the gong show? Wasn't the gong show? No, the gong show is Yeah, it goes back yeah. to like vaudeville and. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Who knows but who started that one? That's kind of weird. There's an easy way to get a guy who won't quit right. off the stage. Yeah, just going to pull him. Hey, there's an idea, Mike, when you won't stop talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get a cane for me. No! Oh, no! But I haven't finished yet. <laughs> but, but, but. Hurry. It's okay. It's okay. I deserve that. I do. But So what do you think of that article that came out recently about why people, why good people uh, follow bad, bad rules? Because... You know, the whole Milgram experiment. Right. I mean, I think people... Do it because if they're not held accountable for their actions, they, they, they'll do it. You know, like people tend to, like, if they're not held accountable for things, they're kind of like, eh, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, I was just following orders. Yeah, and that, you know, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, I was just following orders. Well, because they were just that, you know, they didn't come up with the idea. Somebody else did, and they're getting paid to do it. So they're just doing their job. They're just... Just doing my job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the reverence of authority has also been in you know part of our psyche for so long that it's it's hard for most people to beat into us since childhood because it right. was beat into our parents since childhood. Right, it's encoded in our DNA and scar tissue on the mind. Now, do you think that that's true for everyone? Or do you think that there are certain humans on this planet who have developed without that trauma who maybe are 
are controlling things in the world right now? I don't know. Some people probably are just naturally inclined to be less wooed by it somehow. You know, maybe. I think there's a lot of that, but, you know, I mean... You know, that's something I've thought about. The nurturing circumstances of their life have necessarily inoculated them against, like, some really bad destructive thoughts, you know, possibly. Yeah. Do you think that that maybe contributed to the rise of, like, royalty... Royal families, that kind of thing? I don't know, because I see them when I look at history by those types, and it's just as, you know, maniacal as the stuff we see anywhere else, you know what I mean, right? They just somehow got uh, got the, the, the game tilted in their favor. But. Hmm. I mean, people aren't exactly getting burned at the stake, but it is pretty bad. Yeah, and then... What do you mean? Well, you know, I mean, you had kings and different, like, different forms of 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 the regi or how regis or... No, regis would be well. So, like, yeah, regia, just different, you know, types of monarchies and stuff. You burn you at the stake. Uh, you know, it's a heretic, whatever. He said something, burn him at the stake. Or you know, <laughs> so you're saying there's a good argument that the that the the ones resistant to it have been weeded out. Their their DNA has been reduced potentially. I I you know to be honest, I kind no, of I, think, I, I, think, I kind of think yeah. that's why they killed him is because yeah. they didn't want him to have kids and you know, like, you know start <laughs> yeah. telling their kids this sort of Let's stuff. That's fucking yeah. in this thing now, man. You know? <laughs> I kind of think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't so think it's stuff. just. I don't think it's just. You know, procreation, like like sexual procreation, but also procreation of meme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they talk to right. somebody who right. spreads Absolutely. it to other people. Yeah, I, ideas run like a virus. Yeah, you know, the one you know, if it catches on, it goes around. That was one of those great Ron Paul commercials, right? You know, I said, it, uh, "There's, uh, you can't stop the power of a good idea." You know? yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah. And so, when you have like, uh, they can take our lives, <laughs> but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> ah, that was Braveheart. Have you I, not I, seen I, that I one either? Christie's <laughs> movie I list. Braveheart. Brave it's a scroll. Mike. It's a scroll. <laughs> it, 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 it is. No, on my phone already. I have to go like this. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm not kidding. Christie's movie list. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. And how many have we gotten to on that list so far? Of one. Yeah. yeah. Granted, it was one of the most important ones. Yeah. And she has forgotten it already. <laughs> oh, <I didn't> <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, you have an excuse. In, in her defense, she we she was we were, we were all a little altered. All a little altered. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh. yeah, what were we saying? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. No, I. I <laughs> oh, I, spread of memes. Yo, yeah, and you know, I mean, still like ideas are a virus. You know, very very much so, and it and it's. You know, there, there, there's, you know, patient X who comes up with the idea just almost in the same way as somebody who was like the first one to have the disease does and it spreads around. It alters too. Here's a conspiracy theory for you. Here's a conspiracy theory for you. Okay. What if the development of copyright was to, to, to stop good ideas from spreading? Oh, wow. How so, though? Like, to, you know, trick people into into uh, monopolizing their but ideas. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it, it's another alternative of you of that? No, I'm just kidding. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah, like, really? Okay, all right, all right, 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 okay. So I, I see where you're going with it. That's the, okay, that's the right. fucking cookies thrown to the creative class, man. Keep the, keep the creative class uh, under the wraps so, mm-hmm. uh, they, so they don't take this shit off fucking course, you know? Yeah, that, and that's something else too. Is that like uh, ideas get out, and then they get out to people who think of better ideas who get the out. Channels. But oh. if you can control yeah. that through through copyright and <clears throat> and patents and things like that, yeah, and and all that, then they, stuff is then old. you can keep people in control still. 
All that stuff is so new, though, too. That's all within like the like the past two hundred years. Copyright and stuff, things like that. Well, like, this country's only been around about two hundred. Well, years. no, but I mean, like, it, 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 the idea of copyright existed before the United States, but barely. Like, it was like yeah. there was like a couple like things that were written in France, you know, before then. But right. that was about it. Before then. You know, and I and you can even well, look that, at old books that were that was this is the official I, version. And actually, like, um, you know, well, what's his name? Larry has a really good uh, article about the earliest uh, copyright arguments. Oh, well, going what did they say? So the earliest they, he's been able to find, and say? it was over hand copying books. Ah, and and the the uh, argument uh, the argument went that. Uh, one friar borrowed a uh, book from another one, wrote it out by hand, mm -hmm. and then gave it back. Mm -hmm. And the the original owner was arguing that uh, his book didn't belong to him because he didn't. He was only given the right to read it, not to copy it oh, when wow. he loaned wow. it to him. Huh. Well, and, it, and it turned into a real war, like what? actual people fighting. Okay, Battles. all right, all right. So, so there's a story there I have to look into. Okay, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Now, in that case, because it wasn't, he didn't own the book, I think the one guy might, might have a claim mm -hmm. because he only loaned him the book. Mm -hmm. And if he loaned him the book with certain stipulations... But did he get? But did he like specifically express those yeah, stipulations of like you can't write this down? We're, we're talking five hundred. Well, yeah, years but ago. it doesn't mean that guy like. <laughs> well, I'm saying is we can't tell today what. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. No, fair enough. I guess the other thing about that too is like uh, I mean books were you know uh, uh, a lot more expensive back then too. Well, they're handwritten. Yeah, I mean, and even even once they had the printing press, they're still damn expensive but yeah that's one of those things too the printing press opened up a lot of opportunities so mm -hmm. Opportun opportunities to spread memes that didn't previously exist oh yeah sort of like the internet mm -hmm. the internet was the next great leap yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm thoroughly convinced that the ideas uh, that are spreading you know almost exponentially I think Absolutely. at this point mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't have uh it wouldn't have, wouldn't be possible without the internet. Right. I agree. Yeah, there was a didn't Mark and Rose do a like a he did like a, a graph of he asked yeah. people going to his website, when did you become an anarchist? And you know, there was like a, like a smattering and kind of like a you know, just little ups and downs. It looked, in the, the, graph. the graph looks exponential, but then again we're talking about a select yeah, small right. not a really large data set, fair enough. Right. You know. But, it, but the, you know, for what it is... I think it was just his Facebook friends or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so for what it's worth, it's like the people who said it, like, in the 70s and 80s, it's a fairly ro low number, but then, like, there's a bit of a jump, like, there's a fairly sizable jump, like, 2008, and then, like, an even bigger one, like, 2010, and then it just, you know, and it's just going up there. It's like... Well, it looks like, like exponential growth. It starts fairly flat and then just, like, yeah. shoots up. There's really? that hundredth monkey stuff going on too, right? You know, like. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting too. I was read. I was. I was uh, listening to the Tom Woods show today. Mm -hmm. uh, and something interesting came on. It was this guy in, in, Detroit, who uses nonviolent means. Yeah, posting. To. That. To. Uh, Defense. To, to. To yeah, to private. defend. Uh, as a like a private uh, security force oh, cool. in Detroit, and he's like, uh, just his firm alone has like seen reductions in in uh, in violent crimes just drop down to nothing nice. in the areas that he he mm. patrols and stuff. Nice. And what's really cool about it, I think, is that. He'll charge businesses and stuff mm -hmm. to to lower the crime and that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then people in the neighborhood and stuff who can't afford his service, he get he provides it for free. Oh, nice! And which I think is is uh, is really cool yeah. to see that because cause that's one of the arguments you get about mm -hmm. a free society is well, what about the poor who can't afford these special services right, and yeah. stuff? 
So to see this in real time in, you know, and, and this isn't like bumfuck Nebra- Nebraska or something, yeah, you know, is, this is Detroit. Detroit. This is formally, you know, <laughs> He yeah, said he started yeah. in, this biz- in this building uh, that was seeing uh, uh, home invasions weekly Jeez. throughout the building. And from the time he started... Uh, cause this and this was like when he first started. This is the fir- his very first mm-hmm. security job. He worked in the bu- uh, He lived in the building and and uh, worked for rent. Nice. And he said from the moment he started, there was only one break in after that. Oh wow! And it was, and they caught him. <laughs> but since then, he, they haven't had any more break ins throughout the building. Uh, so and then he spread out from there. Is he like a Jedi? To other something? business and, and stuff like that. Kind of yeah, out that's out it. Yeah. Like I don't know how. Like no, he, how he does use happen? he does I mean, use psychology and yeah. he does use. Um, I'm impressed. Really. Subterfuge, yeah. and, but but a lot of it is just reading the person uh-huh. and and speaking peacefully to them. Oh well, yeah, right. Oh. And, and in and in a compassionate way, expressing to them that their actions are not going to be fruitful, yeah. and they. Nine times out of ten, decide not to go through with whatever they were thinking. Yeah, because like knocking on your door like really, really forcefully, and then saying like, <laughs> "Open up the door, come inside." Like we have to come inside, police. Like yeah, because that makes everybody like really open to what you're gonna say. You know, yeah. That I mean, they, look at that like drastic difference. If he just has a conversation with somebody, where's the police? Like you have to come outside, or we're coming inside. Uh, <laughs> you know. One one story he told I thought was really interesting. He said. Uh, there was this one particular area that was rife with violent uh, drug dealers. Mm-hmm. Now he says he doesn't mess with nonviolent offenders. Mm-hmm. So if you're a drug dealer or drug user who, mm-hmm. who's nonviolent, he is, uh, oh, wow. isn't going around shooting people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He leaves you alone. He doesn't care about that. Nice. It's just violent criminals. Mm-hmm. So, you know, murder, assault, right. rape, and theft mm-hmm. is what he deals in. And. There's this one particular street corner which was always full of these gangbangers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he drives up in this van, right? Mm-hmm. And the biggest guy among them, like, kind of walks up and he, he yells at him. He's like, You guys need to clear out or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So he walks up to, like, the biggest guy in the group and just starts wailing on him with this nightstick, right? <laughs> And then they Jeez. grab him, throw him in the van, and they take off. Uh-huh. Well, everybody else cleared out. Right. Um, and to this day, uh, th- it was, it's apparently been a hotbed for criminal activity mm. since the 50s. Wow. They have not seen a violent criminal on that street corner since. Jeez. And the guy that, that he beat down mm-hmm. was an actor. He was on his payroll. They used, they used fake, they completely faked the whole scenario. Wow. But they saw this guy get black bagged. They never hear from him again. Wow. Charlie just got black bagged and thrown in the back of the van. Fuck. Perhaps we shouldn't have been around, any, around here anymore, guys. Another story he told us that uh, he put up a bunch of fake cameras, like mm-hmm. they're broken, right? But they're cameras, and he walked up to these guy, these gangbangers, you know, and they're like, "Hey guys, just so you know, these guys are recording you, and they're sending the the tapes to to the police to be analyzed mm-hmm. for outstanding warrants and stuff." Mm-hmm. And the guys are like, "Oh, good looking out," and they all, you know, scram. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, the the cameras didn't work, so they weren't even recording, Mm -hmm. and all the gangbangers are, uh, he's all good with the gangbangers now, so they're not trying to seek vengeance and stuff, because they think that he was just helping them out. Yeah. You know. Huh. That's really cool. No, I dig that. But yeah, he, he, he says that... His goal is not to get people arrested, not to get people in trouble, Mm -hmm. just, you know, to prevent crime before it happens. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing, you know, a far better job than the police in Detroit have been doing. Yeah, it sounds like (laughs) it. And it's completely private, and everybody benefits. Post the link at the bottom of um, this um, video. 
Show notes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta be. We gotta yeah, to show notes. We gotta be a little, <laughs> little bit more accurate with show notes. Have yeah, we done it once? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think one time we actually did, yeah, <laughs> we actually put up show notes. Yeah. But that's not something that should be done. But uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. So like, is 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 he looking to like? Expand what he's doing, or yeah, it, they're already yeah they're already enterprise. talking about oh, okay. spreading it to other cities, okay, all around the world and stuff. It's working. It seems to work. Which there you go. You can have a voluntary society and not you know have to have like you know a violent police force. There you go. Ooh. He also he's also now working with the police, giving them training on how to approach situations. You know, less threatening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I got a great idea. First off, let's start with not shooting them, <laughs> and let's go from there. Can we all just, you know, not just... Don't shoot them, you say. Okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, write this, that down. This Don't this shoot, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, your homework is to go home and cross-stitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how Demolition to... Demolition Man? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Demolition Man, that was a fun movie. It was. That new, uh, speaking of cops though, in Detroit, I guess this got me thinking. That new RoboCop was kind of a trip. It was good, but it was, mm -hmm. it was, you know, there's definitely some undertones in there. Like the, uh, what was it? Uh, Samuel Jack Samuel Jackson's character is totally supposed to be like Bill O'Reilly, <laughs> and it's hilarious. Like to me, if like you really watch like with like the graphics and all the stuff in the movie, it's like the Novak element instead of the O'Reilly factor. You know, and you're just like, oh, this is. This is good. This is smart. <laughs> this is very. Somebody was thinking on this one. <laughs> yeah, so there's little little undertones in that one. I thought was pretty entertaining. Mm. I don't remember liking it too much. You don't like it? <laughs> I thought I only it watched it once, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know exactly what it was I didn't like about it. But I tend to not like remakes anyway. Fair. Yeah. No, I understand that. I understand that. But I'm a little bit upset there. Plus, they're I'm a lot this. less, you know, cop friendly than I was when I watched the first one. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. But I was just saying, like, there's good things about it. It's not like I mean, like watching like the movie, being like, oh yay, cops, you know. <laughs> obviously. Oh, did you hear they're making a a, a uh, sequel to Olympus Down or the Olympus Has Fallen? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see the first one, and the idea was so terrible. The one, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what is it like? What is that's the one that's kid, somebody kids tries to kidnap the president or something? Sound or, like that? Because uh, that sounds plausible. But then again, there was that one dude who just booked it across like the front lawn of the White House, and, like <laughs> made it inside or something. <laughs> you know, what was that last year or something? He made it like into like the front atrium or something, a wild like that. And you expect machine guns to pop out of the grass or something. You know? <laughs> We have to protect our commander in chief, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he more important than I am? That's what I want to know. Well, you see, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's been a general theme of the show, but there's this whole like hierarchical thing, <laughs> government, right? There's a guy up at the mm -hmm. top. Yeah, there's and a guy. He ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and some people say that that president guy is more of a puppet, really. I tend to agree. <laughs> Myself. You know what I find kind of interesting is that the Secret Service was originally created to stop counterfeiting. Yep, yep. <laughs> and they still that's still like what they do, supposedly. That if you got bored with the printer and started moving some bills around, yeah, you might get the Secret Service to show up. So don't and do that. They raided the Federal Reserve? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, only authorized counterfeiters yeah, are only, allowed. Yeah. Speaking of counterfeiting, I guess, like, there's, uh, they have hundreds that come from North Korea. They're counterfeited in North Korea. Yeah. They're so good, nobody cares. <laughs> they're, no, they're actually like they're they're like spot on, and they just like kind of don't like they just don't like to talk about it that much because they don't want people to start thinking that they're fake, but they might be fake. <laughs> but they're the, like the counterfeits that come the counterfeit hundreds that come from North Korea are so good that you can't tell the difference. 
Well, that's how nations engage in economic warfare. I don't know. We've cut. We've cut. When I worked at at uh, mm-hmm. Harris, we cut several fake bills. Yeah, but were they from North Korea? Right. I have no idea. That's what I'm telling. But they were pretty saying. good. They were really good. Like I if, bet. Yeah. if if you didn't look at the bill with a magnifying glass mm-hmm. to look at the micro printing, you you wouldn't be able to tell. Oh wow! They're that good. So they might have come from. North Korea. Yeah. It might have been. They might have been those North Korean bills. Huh? Are they the hundreds with the ribbons in them? All that stuff. Um. Oh, the weird holographic thing. Yeah. No, it was the older one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um. Does anyone balk at those now? I wonder. And at this point, does anybody even like care if it's fake? They're like that's what I get. I get the vibe from a lot. Like did a lot of different stories. Go. It's like I had them twenty. Like they don't even look twice anymore. They're like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. If you it's a hundred, I think they check. Yeah, I mean they're supposed to. Yeah, but you know, and I've been to places where they do check twenties, and it's just irritating. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it could be fake. I don't know. Yeah, but then whatever. Like somebody like I. When they put the pen across like a bill or something, I always just want to say they're all fake. Every, they're all. That's what I really wanted to just tell. Them. No, it's all fake. I mean, don't even bother. <laughs> you know? save, save the time. It's all fake. <laughs> fake money for for fake money for fake bonds and interest and stuff. So, 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 how is Bitcoin different? Um, because there's a finite amount of Bitcoin. Is that the only difference? Uh, no. If it's if it's fake, it's fake, no matter whether it's finite well, or not, right? Well, yeah, okay, but the infrastructure. <sighs> All right, so I'm not the most knowledgeable person on Bitcoin, but the thing is, is that like when it, when the block comes out, like there there's a number for it, and you couldn't like you. If, if the number didn't come from that block, it's obviously fake. And there's really no way to fake it. Mm-hmm. And if somebody tried to fake it, like, it would be, you know, be noticeable, like, super quick. It's not just like, oh, that can no, 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 around no, for a while. No, 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 but Bitcoin doesn't exist tangibly. Oh, so um. So how is it different from fiat? Uh, it, is a, it isn't. It's a fiat currency. Yeah. But the way I see it, yeah. the, with it's saving grace is there's no gun. <laughs> No guns of the state backing it up and man and making you know mandating arbitrary numbers uh, upon its existence or whatever. Yeah. So ultimately, at the end of the day, you're free to choose whether to use it or not, and what and what. Uh, yeah. So is it money? Yeah. Well, sure. Well, if you're exchange, yeah, if it's it's sure. It, to me, I don't know the textbook, but I mean, if two two people agree upon using it for to exchange. Goods and services, or whatever, then yeah, it's money. I think there's a little bit more to it, like like uh, a an accounting of yeah. resources. You're probably right about that too. So I don't know. It's kind of dependent. I, I think I think it counts, but per the the Austrian model, I don't think it meets the full right. Does it matter? Well, you know, I just the thing is, is yeah. that like we can't ask Mary Rothbard right now because he's not around. So. I think this goes back to Mises. Yeah, it does. You're right. <laughs> Probably does. I think it does. I think you're right. The Godfather. I can't think of it now, but there's some test to. Oh, is it durable? Uh, malleable? Um, no, 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 not that. Mises is regression theory. Yes, that's it. Mises's regression theorem. That, according to that, Bitcoin would not be money. But that I see more of as a, as a test of whether it's real money, not necessarily the qualifier, right? Yeah. Well, I'm all good. Like, with if you pass this, then you're definitely money. But if you don't pass, doesn't mean it's definitely not money. I'm all for Bitcoin. The only problem with Bitcoin is what if the power goes up? That's well, my only. That's my only issue with it. It's well, totally cool with me, but if, if the power, the goes, power out, goes out with your money in the bank, well, yeah, yeah. Don't keep your money in the bank. <laughs> 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 if anyone's watching the show, don't don't keep your money in the bank. Yeah, 
I got but, you. But you're you're uh, describing a doomsday scenario, and yeah. Well, yeah. In that case, we're all fucked. Yeah, know? this is very true. So that would it really would it really matter at that point whether your ones and zeros yeah, are, are, are Bitcoin yellow or, or or what yeah. if you had like uh, some kind of uh, you know. Uh, robot or something. Donald Trump sex robot? That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> well. <laughs> and the power went out. What would happen? Uh, to the Donald Trump sex <laughs> robot when the power goes out? I don't want to know. I don't want to be I don't want to live in that world. <laughs> I don't want to live in that world. <laughs> I really don't. 